You know, the 1930s was a weird time for B-movies across the states and worldwide. Now, this seems kind of far-fetched, but what if I told you the person who turned out to be the greatest movie star of all time got his, not say secondary big start, but got a big start in a hockey movie? Well, here we go, and whether you believe it or not, is maybe part of the Ripley uh, universe. When John Wayne was a B-level actor in these 60-minute movies of the mid to late 1930s, one of them he did was something called Idol of the Crowds. Now, this American sport drama was directed by Arthur Lubin and starred John Wayne again as a chicken farmer who was also an accomplished hockey player as a sideline. It was a, one of a series of non-Westerns Wayne made for Universal to get away from his, uh, what he called these orders that he was doing. The film, get this, was originally called Hell on Ice, but the Hayes office requested this be, be changed. Now, I Love the Crowds is just a tremendous title for any movie, but for hockey, uh, you'll see what I mean, because most... Uh, most people don't see his hockey players as idols, uh, idol, uh, being idolized by the crowd or celebrated. But like I said, we'll get in the plot here. Now in, in the movie, again 60 minutes, the New York Panthers ice hockey team is struggling in the standings. Uh, a group of scouts headed by Kelly, uh, played uh, by uh, uh, Russell Hopton, heads to Maine where they heard of a promising former amateur player. He turns out to be John Hansen, John Wayne, now a chicken farmer. Now Hansen does not wish to return to the game when he learns how much money he can make. He agrees solely so he can make enough to upgrade his farm. His skills make him an instant sensation, but as the team heads towards the championship series, he runs afoul of crooked gamblers and the beautiful woman, uh, Sheila Bromley, that tempt him. Now includes, again, uh, John Wayne or Johnny Hanson, 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 very close. Sheila Bromley is Helen Dale. <coughs> Charles Brokaw as Jack Irwin, Bill Barred as Bobby, Jane Jones as Peggy, Huntley Gordon as Harvey Castle, Frank Otto as Joe Garber, Russell Hopton as Kelly, Hal Neiman as Squat Bates, Virginia Brisek as Mrs. Dale, George Lloyd as Spike Regan, Clem Bevins as Andy Moore, Wayne Castle as Swifty, Lloyd Ford as Hank, and Lee Ford as Elmer. Now, the film was announced in April of 1937. In May of that year, Universal announced the film as part of his upcoming output, which was normal at the time to announce it and film it and then get it to the screens as much as possible. Now, filming took place in May of that year. Wayne later said, later said I'm from Southern California. I've never been on, uh, on blank skates in my life. I was in a hospital for two blanking days after that. Now, Wayne's biographer, Scott Yeeman, later said it was a fish-out-of-water experience for the actor. Hockey was just something completely alien to him. This was before television, so he probably never ever seen a hockey game. As for skating, he basically gets away with it. He's okay as long as he's moving in a straight line. Now, of all the publications, the Christian Science Monitor said it had whatever this means, is sufficient entertainment. Now, released on September 30th, 1937, I haven't seen much of the box office. I, I would figure it did okay in reruns as well, and uh, some of these uh, movies were shown on uh, basic uh, cable and independent channels under the public domain years later. Now, Ironically, there was a big lawsuit about this movie. Madison Square Gardens sued Universal over the movie claiming the hockey scenes damaged his reputation by falsely representing that the violent games in the film took place at the Garden. The suit was unsuccessful. Um, no, because violent games would take place at the Garden. And uh, the... <laughs> Uh, violence was a big draw for the fans of Madison Square Garden because MSG was hosting wrestling, they're hosting boxing, and they're hosting hockey. A lot of uh, a lot of uh, things uh, put together. Now, uh, different uh, tags on this, of course. Uh, the New York Times did a big spread on it in May of 37, and uh, the Guelph Mercury did a very interesting article. Uh, John Wayne's Gratefully Forgotten Hockey Movie, where a non-skater made Idol, Idol of the Crowds, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, a big, uh, big hit. Now, uh, the idea of this movie, it was featured, I think, on Hockey Night in Canada as part of the essays back in the 1970s, which uh, begs the argument, how many people in Canada 
knew that John Wayne was in a hockey movie. I think more than knew was in the States. If uh, baseball movies were very common. Now, John Wayne, to my knowledge, maybe you can back up, he never did a baseball movie. I think he did a racing movie. I could be wrong, but you think he would have been asked to do a baseball movie or a football movie? You know, like a like a George Gibbs style thing. So I mean, uh, no offense, what it's a tremendous title. Idol, Idol of the Crowd just rolls off the tongue. But like I said, uh, sixty minutes, and the quicker you get it, get him in quicker out. And these are probably part of those you know old double features where you have the serial at the first and cartoons. So two hours and a half, you're in, you're out. You get a couple of movies. Anyway, I've seen the movie once, and I gave it uh, two stars out of five. Just seeing John Wayne in kind of a pseudo New York Americans, New York Rangers, uh, uh, you know, uh, sweater uniform from the time. It's quite interesting. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you've seen the movie, let me know what you think of it. Uh, I think in the film, he looks kind of like a young... Uh, Mark Recchi would have kind of a swervy, uh, more swervy haircut. Yeah, anyway, that's my opinion. John Wayne, uh, he's, uh, I've seen him with so many different hair pieces, it's hard to tell what's real and what's fake. Again, John Wayne, hockey star, it is what it is. Thanks for listening. Bye.